Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, we had Nathan here. He stayed weak due to dry air as expected and moving to New Mexico. Got up to a moderate to strong tropical storm. Didn't get it to a hurricane. Uh, he tried to, but he didn't get enough moisture in here and he cooled off the water beneath him into the dry air knocked him down he moved into Mexico not a big deal for them we're now watching Maria over here which has an exposed surface center northwest of Puerto Rico with the thunderstorm activity off to the east and she's still getting sheared there's an upper low playing with her up here this will probably eventually move out of the way and out ahead of this southwesterly flow aloft Maria will probably try to strengthen in here probably make a run at hurricane status northeast of the Bahamas but then as she moves into the cold water wake caused by Cadia near and west of Bermuda she'll probably get knocked down again so not going to be a huge deal either way because she will be recurving out to sea here and she might scrape Bermuda with her eastern side depending on how close she passes but it's not going to be a huge deal general track like Cadia on her way out will not be a significant threat to anyone here and her low-level center is coming a little bit farther west than some of the forecasts, but she'll be recurving either way into this trough and not be a huge deal. The next area that we're going to watch, well, actually, I should mention that in about three to five days, the GFS tries to develop a tropical wave out here near the Cape Verde Islands, and we will keep an eye on that. But in terms of imminent threats to land, we're going to be watching for development in the Caribbean, specifically the western and northwestern Caribbean down the road here for next week after this weekend because things are going to be happening in the pattern that we've been talking about. The GFS shows another cold outbreak coming into the United States with much below normal temperatures here showing up in the plains all the way to the eastern seaboard. And the idea here has been that when the air gets very cold over here, it's going to become denser. And so we're going to have high pressure developing over the eastern United States, more so than we've had for most of the season where it's been very low pressures over the eastern U.S. We've also got cold water from Cadia and Irene and Maria recurving over here, which is also forcing the water to become cold and the pressures to rise over the southwest Atlantic. What does this mean? Well, it means that air is getting forced southward from these areas of high pressure which means that it's converging down here over warmer water and allowing low pressure to develop over the northwestern Caribbean. And that's been the guts and the meat and potatoes of this entire reasoning for this pattern that I've been talking about ever since I started nine days ago. This is the reasoning. It's that simple. It's not complicated here. It's just the reasoning of this pattern to force activity down into the Caribbean. And we can see what happens here by day 10 the cool air starts to moderate over the south but notice what's happening the warmth redevelops farther north than it was before remember we've had the axis of hot summer all down here and that generally suppresses activity in the Gulf of Mexico Northwest Caribbean because you've got all this warm air you've got low surface pressures but high pressure aloft in the mid-levels which just suppresses everything in here brings a bunch of dry air and shearing over the Gulf of Mexico and doesn't really allow things to get going in here but if we shift the warmth north we induce a pattern where upward motion is more able to generate over this area and we can support the idea of a significant tropical cyclone closer to the Gulf of Mexico and the Florida and Bahamas area than we've been able to see so far this season and here's the GFS day six. Look what we have here, 1,034 millibar high over Maine. And if you get these big highs over New England, guess what? You have to watch off to their south in here. And it looks like it tries to pull off something along the tail end of a front in here, but that's going to be insignificant. The overall idea here is see the pressures over this area in general are higher than they've been all season long, which implies that we're going to be forcing convergence of air down into the Caribbean. And then watch what happens five days later. See what starts to go on in here? Low pressure starting to develop. And then five days after that, guess what? We have a storm off the Yucatan and moving into the Gulf of Mexico. This is the idea here and the basics that the models are starting to catch on to and I think are starting to support this idea a little bit. The European also shows low pressure, albeit weak, in the northwestern Caribbean by day 10. Again, with ridging off to the north here, helping to force convergence down in the areas which haven't seen it in a while. We haven't really had that, that much going on in the western Caribbean this season so far. So this may be the point. We're getting into later part of September now. The Cape Verde season isn't going to be as active as we might have a storm or two more in the eastern to central Atlantic. But the ridge is starting to build back in here because the 
hurricanes that have been in this area are depleting this area of energy. And so they're going to take a break. This area of the Atlantic is going to take a break, which is going to allow the Caribbean to start to take off here and allow heat to be released. And the GFS shows this, 250 millibar winds in 10 days. Notice the cyclonic turning of the wind in here. It means upper level high pressure, which implies heat being released aloft and convection going off in this area where development is likely to occur in about 10 days or so. So we're going to be watching this very carefully during the third week of September, the window I've been talking about between the 15th and the 25th, now more like the 18th to the 25th, but we are watching this area closely. And the pattern for this it's going to leave really two options for a possible track. This is the European and the GFS on the right, European on the left, 8 to 10 day mean 500 millibar heights and anomalies. We can see that they have to agree on the pattern here. They've been fighting for a little while. They agree a little bit better now. Big ridge over the southeast Canada and a little bit of a trough over the center of the country, which is something we haven't seen very much. The Texas ridge is forced off to the south over Mexico, but it is still here, which means that a move northwest is probably going to be hard to pull off for a potential system developing in the northwest Caribbean. And more likely, we're going to have either a track straight west into Central America or what I think is more likely a track track into the weakness to the north here into this troughiness area and something along the lines of either off into the Bahamas or off into the Florida or off into the central to eastern Gulf something along those lines a storm developing in the Caribbean and moving north that's not the only option it has like I said it could go west depending on how far south it develops but in general I think this area is getting ready to see its first real dose of tropical activity that we have seen this season in this kind of a pattern Again, ridging over southeast Canada, we always have that when we have significant hurricanes making landfall in the United States. You almost always see this here. That's almost always there. So we're going to have to be watching this very carefully over the coming couple of weeks. Next week, we will be having to watch the Caribbean very closely. And until then, we will just keep watching and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.